right? Aloy? Yeah, Aloy Lasanta. You said it right. Perfect. Um, and as a little bit of background, I am taking a small business management course. And as part of that course, we were asked to do an informational interview with somebody from our chosen industry. And, um, well, in my case, that's independent game publishing, and that's where Eloy comes in. He's um, published several games under the Third Eye Games um, moniker, and um, I, I highly encourage that everybody check them out. They're wonderful games, and he seems like um, he has a really good grasp on the business side of things, at least from what I've been able to read at his blog. It's EloyTheSaint.com, is that correct? The, the blog is AlloyTheSaint.com. Uh, Third Eye Games' official website is ThirdEyeGames.net. Great. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and jump in, I guess. Um, Let's do it. Let's do it. So the first question, um, how did you get started with Third Eye Games? Was it that you wanted to write games and you needed a way to publish them, or you wanted to publish games and you just had some ideas, or... Um, it actually, yeah, it actually started very much with me wanting to write my own games, and because um, I had been doing some freelancing and I had been working with other people's ideas uh, for years, doing free stuff and paid stuff, and uh, it just wasn't, it wasn't filling that niche for me. I needed to be able to step out and do my own thing, uh, so I said, well, I'm going to write this whole game, and my friend said, so what are you going to do with it now? And I said, I guess I'll publish it. And so, um, I mean, my entire career in publishing has actually been like a nonstop uh, experimenting of doing different things and, you know, doing a lot of trial by error, um, tri trial and error, trial mm -hmm. by fire. Oh, I'm, I'm mixing my terms here. But yes, <laughs> doing a lot of, doing a lot of like, I'm going to see how this works. Oh, that bombed. Well... Now I know not to do that in the future. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Um, I know that that's probably how a lot of us start. It's kind of how I started myself. I, I did actually kind of want to become an independent publisher on my own, but that's because I had a whole vision for what accessible games should be. Right. But I know that um, there are a lot of people nowadays who are putting up a Kickstarter to get this game idea that they had out to the world, and then they realize that they need a whole business... Um, an organization, a, you know, business licenses, freelancers to help them with art, editing, layout. Well, and sometimes they do. Um, I know of a few people who they're using Kickstarter because they have a really cool idea for this game, and then they're going to make this game, release that game, and that's going to be it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people out there who are doing that. They're not trying to start a business. They really are just trying to use Kickstarter as a way to get their game out without having to go through a traditional publisher. Right. Um, you know, I've been, you know, I've been kind of doing kind of a, a mix a mix of the two. You know, I'm releasing, you know, some things um, that are continuations of things but from before Kickstarter, mm -hmm. some brand new things to Kickstarter. Um, but obviously I do still do traditional publishing, uh, PDF publishing, you know, things like that as well. Right. Okay. Um... So you said that you just sort of have been doing everything kind of trial and error. Um, if you were to kind of go back and start again, what sort of educational programs might you recommend to somebody who's looking at getting into the publishing industry? Um, you know, that's, that's an interesting one because I myself took zero. Okay. Um, so <laughs> but, I mean, I could, I could immediately say um, through communication that I've had with people who... Um, in the industry as well, uh, who are you know business businessmen, business majors, they have degrees and and tons of things, and um, they obviously have like stronger um, stronger grasps on the business side of it. I'm a very creative person mm -hmm. who is doing the pu is doing the publishing and the business side um, out of necessity more than for my love of working with numbers and money. Sure. Uh, so, I mean, I love money. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Gay money, um, but you know, the uh, the you know the the important thing uh, is you know, and like I said, it's like it really was just a you know, I kind of want to get this game out. How do I do that? Well, you need to publish it. Well, how do I publish it? Well, you need to have um, a DBA or fictitious name 
Okay, well, let's do that. Okay, what's the next step? Okay, well, now you need to get a website. Okay, let's do a mm -hmm. website. Okay, now you need to get a logo, and you need to put all the pieces together. Now you need to get a release schedule. Now you need to get expense reports. Now you need... And it just, it just kind of all piled on top of each, on top of each other until I actually had a working business weird thing there. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that um, you would ever consider going back to school even to just pick up a few business management courses, or do you think you've kind of gotten a grasp on it? Um, no, no. Um, I mean, uh, there's always more than anyone can learn about anything. Sure. Um, and I, I would say, yeah, I would probably go back, maybe take some statistic classes, mm -hmm. maybe take some, uh, some business running classes, uh, you know, things like that. I mean, uh, economics classes would be good. Uh, you know, it's mm -hmm. it, it's all of that, or I start making enough money that I can pay someone else to handle my money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's one of the two. I, I, it it probably will end up being me going back and taking classes, or even just buying some textbooks, you sure. know, from the from the iBookstore or something like that. Just buy an you know, economics textbook and try and teach myself. Sure. Um, you know, uh, I'm actually, you know, I'm a big fan of of. You know, if there's something that needs to get done, uh, I can go and I can see how well I can do at it because, you know, actually the whole publishing thing, I didn't think I was going to be very good at it, and then I actually end up being okay at it. So, you know, um, you know, it, it just, it, it, you never know until you try. So I would probably go out and try, and then if I, if it didn't work, then I might partner up with somebody who might be able to help me on that end of it. Well, that makes sense. Um, so... Education aside, what sort of personal characteristics do you think um, are necessary for somebody to have in this field? Um, in this field, honestly, um, you have to have a real passion for what you're doing. Uh, the money doesn't come right away, if at all, for right. a lot of people. Um, I mean, and, and, and again, and, you know, Kickstarter's kind of changing that, but, you know, even with Kickstarter... You know, I, I, you know, you get a big bunch of money up front, yes. and then it's, then it's based upon what you do with that as to whether it will continue. So it still, you know, requires that passion to put it out there and continue on with what you were trying to do in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, besides the, uh, you know, the passion for it, I mean, you, I, mean uh, I, I mean, I hate to, I mean, and we're, we're talking more about the publishing side of it. Um, you have to, you know, be at least somewhat organized. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I am not the most organized person. Well, I'm, I'm a, I'm a cluttered person. Mm -hmm. There's, there's organization to my clutter, but there's a lot of just stuff everywhere. Yeah, that's sort uh, of the artistic <laughs> way. Isn't it? What's that? It's sort of the artistic way, isn't it? To exactly. just have like, organized chaos. Exactly, and I, and I enjoy being um, the organized chaos kind of person. Um, I think it suits me well. Um, and uh, but 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 organization not only of your things and your tools and your numbers but also organization uh, of your time management. Mm -hmm. Your time management is super super important. Um, I have a tendency to overbook myself a lot of the time, uh, and <laughs> I mean I always end up I always end up coming through and that's the last that's you know not the last thing it was actually there's a ton of things I could list here but one of the other things is honestly is um you know uh dependability uh mm -hmm. and and being able to be held accountable for yourself uh sure. you know that's actually really really important especially if you're doing something that uh is similar to uh what I do which is you know self publishing you know, basically, um, I'm I'm a self-published, you know, game designer slash writer slash author slash layout person slash editor slash art director slash whatever. I can give myself whatever deadlines I want, mm -hmm. um, but in order to keep a certain schedule, I have to hold myself accountable for getting books out when they need to come out. Right. I mean, I could slack and say, "Ah, it's coming out whenever whenever I feel like it." Um, but then that's not what's going to get you a successful business. Right, and that sort of hurts public perception, too, I'd imagine. If you're constantly missing, like, estimated release dates and not oh, yeah, fulfilling your Kickstarter goals on time. Most definitely. Um, one of my, uh, 
one of my core things, and this is actually, um, I don't really share this with a lot of people, uh, but one of the key things to how I'm able to get things out, how I'm able to kind of stay successful in what I'm doing is I tell people what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, and if I tell people what I'm doing, because if I'm like in my hole and I have like a thousand projects that I'm working on and no one ever knows about it, I'm not accountable to anyone. But if right. I say, by June I will have this game out, everybody's now expecting it. Mm -hmm. If I don't come out with a game in June, then I am now being held accountable for that publicly. And it's, it's kind of a trick to kind of psych myself into releasing things at the right time. Um, and, you know, and, and it might be late June, early mm -hmm. July, if I say something like that, sure. um, you know, at the latest. But, uh, you know, I, I use that as a tool to kind of keep me on track mm -hmm. because um, I do value my reputation. Not everybody does. Some people are, you know, they just don't give a crap about what people think about them. Mm -hmm. I actually do. Um, I actually do very much care uh, how I am perceived and um, and not in a, ooh, you know, I hope they like me, but in a, I want people, I want to be respected in the industry that I am working in. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just, like I said, that's just one of the main tools that I use in order to, to keep that up. It's funny, I'm kind of like that too, actually. I I will put something off until the very last minute unless... I've given somebody my word, mm -hmm. at which point, like, that's that's my bond. Um, if I tell somebody I'm going to do something, I dang well better do it. Exactly. And even, if, and even if I do give my word and I procrastinate, it'll still get done on time. Yeah. <laughs> I might just also procrastinate. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> so um, on the topic of time, I know that you have a day job as well. Yes. How much time do you put into Third Eye Games outside of your day job? Like, how do you, frankly, how do you juggle everything? You know, the juggling, it, it kind of comes. Uh, I, I have a very flexible schedule at my day job, um, and it's because I have children. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, they, they allow me to basically leave slightly earlier than everyone else so that I can accommodate the kids' school schedule and help them with homework and whatnot. Okay. Uh, my kids are also at an age where a lot of the time, they would rather be left alone. Um, they don't need me all up in their stuff. You know, my daughter has her Wii. She's playing her Wii. She's got her iPod. She's got friends coming over. My son, he likes to play on his computer. He's got parties to go to. Um, you know, my, and again, my, my kids are 11 and 9. Mm -hmm. um, they're very self-sufficient at this age. Um, and, and uh, you know, obviously I'll take the, the odd night off. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, to say, hey, let's watch a movie or let's play some board games or something like that. Uh, but for the most part, uh, my evenings are pretty much free, especially after they go to bed, because um, my kids have always had a strict bedtime, um, and then I have several hours after that. Um, I would say I go to my day job uh, for about six to seven hours each day, and then I come home and I work uh, approximately four additional hours uh, on Third Eye Games almost every night, some nights more, uh, and then of course the weekends... Um, there are weekends where I do nothing, and then there are weekends where I am completely consumed mm -hmm. uh, with Third Eye Games, so it kind of depends on um, what's going on at the time. Uh, I mean, but, but I keep, a, I keep a, a pretty good schedule as to what I should be working on at any given time. Okay. Um, you know, because I have uh, four game lines, working on two others, I'm doing layout for a couple of companies, mm -hmm. um, I'm doing editing for one company, you know, and I'm working on some different things, and I'm trying to juggle and make sure that I get everybody's stuff done uh, in a timely manner. And it's, it's difficult, but, you know, Monday, like this week, uh, you know, Monday was sending emails, um, creating contracts uh, for artists and for freelancing, um, you know, and then I also worked a little bit on um, some Wuxing uh, for the Truth and Lies book. Um, Tuesday, I worked a little bit more on Wuxing, um, I also did a little bit of work on some of the covers for Storm Battalion, which will be coming out probably next year. Um, I did some work on some of the layout for um, K-1 
Camp Myth and a, a few of the other things for Camp Myth. Um, I'm starting to do a little bit of organization for um, AetherCon, which is coming up next uh, weekend. Uh, and I'm also finding uh, that there's a couple of other cons like Club Mace that I'm thinking about going to. I've been communicating with uh, MomoCon and a bunch of other stuff. So, I mean, so that was my Tuesday was wow. emails back and forth, um, working on art, working on writing, working on stuff. And I had the interview with Geekarati that night. Um, right. You know, so, I mean, I, I did... I did a lot of Tuesday was a very busy day for me, which is probably why I didn't do much yesterday. Uh, but, <laughs> but, you know, um, again, and yesterday I just worked a little bit more on Wuxing. I, I'm, I'm inching my way through Wuxing so that I can get the Truth and Lies book out. Um, that Kickstarter ended, I think, about a month ago. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really trying to get that out for, for everybody. And I have about a couple of weeks until I get the, the full um, artwork from all of the artists. So I'm trying mm -hmm. to get the writing and the editing done so that when the art comes in, I can just throw it in a layout, take a couple of days to edit, create an, ind an index and whatnot, and then go ahead and shoot it out there. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so, how do you keep track of all of this? Do you use, like, Excel spreadsheets or Google um, calendars? Or? I don't use Excel spreadsheets. I probably should. <laughs> um, I actually just have a very um, detailed to-do list mm -hmm. um, with um, alerts and due dates and things like that. I have I have a very detailed calendar that mm -hmm. I use. Um, I and I sync I sync my reminders with my Basecamp, um, you know, project management with my iCal with my personal calendar okay. with everything. Um, you know, I'm I'm a Mac guy, so everything kind of works together so everything mm -hmm. is just all in one calendar and it's just you know without me really having to think about it. Well that's handy. Yes. <laughs> um, so speaking of conventions um, yes. there are a lot of, I've read personally a lot of like pros and cons about going to conventions as a publisher. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's worth the time and investment? Like are you getting a return on your investment, so to speak? And yes. as far as, like, number of sales, or...? Yes and no. And, um... I mean, let, let's, like, let's start off with the big one. Gen mm -hmm. Con. Right? Mm -hmm. Um... Gen Con will cost me, as a publisher, anywhere from two grand to $2,500. Wow. And that's including hotel, um, travel, food, the booth... Um, materials, printing books, things like that. And actually, it might be a little bit closer to three grand. But I might go to the con and sell fifteen hundred dollars worth of books. Mm -hmm. I'm still at a negative. However, um, Gen Con is one of those things that the 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 present being there and being present is worth so much in advertisement. Sure. Just having a presence there. Um, you know, it's it's like, because the, there are a lot of booths that do really, really well, and then the publishers might say, well, I didn't make a lot of money, so I'm not going to go back next year. Mm -hmm. And then people say, why didn't they have a booth this year? Wait a minute, are they out of business? Wait a minute, are they coming oh. out with anything else? What's going on? You know, and it becomes that kind of thing. I mean, And Gen Con specifically is like that. N not so much with a lot of the other cons mm -hmm. that aren't so gamer centric, but um, if you're a publisher and you can get into get into Gen Con and it's and and it's worth it for you to continue that, mm -hmm. um, and that's the way that I'm looking at it is you know any money that I spend um, and, and and I always sell very well. I've I've done Gen Con twice. Uh, my first year was phenomenal, and last year was above average. Okay. Um, you know, so you know it wasn't as phenomenal as that very first year, but um, you know, I had I had a, f a fewer newer titles um, and things like that because a couple of my projects got pushed back and yeah, whatever. Um, but <laughs> but um, but yeah. So um, Gen Con specifically is one of those that if you can get in on the Gen Con, I mean, and the, they have a long waiting list. I mean, if you have, but if you're making enough money, it is worth the investment. Um, and that first year investment is going to be a lot. I mean, I printed a lot of my T-shirts. I printed my banners. I printed, uh, I bought um, shelves and, 
you know, got all of my materials together, and I, you know, made a, a whole kind of booth setup, and I spent some money on that my first year. Sure. You know, posters and flyers and, and all that stuff. And, you know, posters and flyers, though, those are going to be re reoccurring uh, promotional expenses. But, you know, for the most part, your, you know, your big ones are going to be your banners and your, um, your booth construction first. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, if it's well done, then you can kind of keep that for a little bit until you feel like you want to change it up a little bit. Um, okay. one, one company that does it really well is Exile Games. They always have a completely different setup every Gen Con. Wow. Um, and I actually really envy them. There was one year that they had um, a tent and everybody was dressed up in like explorer garb and they had, I mean, it was, it was like amazing. They, had, they took up like two booths space um, because it was all decorative and they had nets and all kinds of stuff. I mean, it was amazing and I, I was so wow. in awe of them uh, that year. And, and then this year... They kind of had more of a subdued kind of look, but then they were all dressed like gangsters. I mean, and, and like they really kind of brought it out. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not there yet. I'm, I'm working my way up to sure. that. But that's, but that's somebody who I always go every Gen Con, and I go, I'm like, I wonder what they're doing this year at that booth. That sounds like fun. Um. Oh, but um, but other cons, it really kind of depends. Um, I actually just went to a local con here and I decided that um, this year was going to be my last year going to it because it just it wasn't worth the worth the money that invested into it mm -hmm. I wasn't getting a return um, the attendance is is falling nobody's showing up to the games I'm trying to run nobody's buying that many books um, but I'm spending money on the booth and for me and my wife and an, and an assistant to come in and food and you know hotel mm -hmm. and I mean, I'm spending a bunch of money and I'm not seeing a return so I probably won't go to that one again, but I'm going to replace it with other cons because, again, um, cons are worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Going out there and being in the community, that's what cons are about, mm -hmm. um, is going out and, you know, I could just have a website that just says, hey, come play my awesome games, meaning you have to buy it, you have to run it, you have to do everything, right. or you can go to a con I'm at I'll run a game for you, you'll fall in love with it, and then you'll buy it with an idea of what, um, how a game can already go. Because um, sure. that, was, that was one of the very first things that I learned was people buy games that they play. Um, okay. So if you go to cons and people play in your games and they have fun playing your games, they'll buy your game. I mean, it's just, that's like, boom, that's, that's just... Publishing 101. <laughs> yeah, well, well, game publishing 101. Go to cons, run games, people buy games. Nice. <laughs> so I noticed that you are on a panel with Chris Perrin for EtherCon? Yes, at EtherCon next weekend. Um, uh, how do you feel about online conventions? I mean, obviously like, you're, you're starting to... What's that? Um, I mean, it, it seems like you're starting to kind of get into that with EtherCon. Yeah, this is my first one. Um, I don't even know how it how it works really, but again, it's like well, I've been to some physical cons. I know how those work. Let's try an online con. I've heard of some others. Um, I've heard that they've been reasonably su successful. Mm -hmm. um, so let's give it a shot. You know, um, it, the the worst it can do, uh, especially in this case with an online con um, where the the space is free. Um, mm -hmm. The you know I'm paying you know the only real expense is my bandwidth, which I pay for monthly anyway, mm -hmm. um, and some of my time. You know, so I mean, it's it's worth it to see if this is something um, that I might want to continue. I mean, I might go to this and I might say, you know, maybe it's not for me. Mm -hmm. or maybe I won't do online conventions. But I'm hoping I'm going to go to this and it's going to be amazing. I mean, uh, they've they've been planning a lot of stuff and they have all their structure in place. So I'm anticipating that it's going to be successful. Sure. Uh, so, I mean, everybody go out to AetherCon, come out to the booth and, and um, come chat with me or video with me. I don't know. I Still, I have no clue how it's set up. But it'll work out. It'll work out in the end. <laughs> and that's, um, that's next weekend, right? That is next weekend, um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, um, this year... Um, the the interesting thing about publishing and specifically game publishing mm -hmm. um, is that what I have found is that longevity is key. Okay. Um, 
And that's definitely something that should be brought up in this kind of conversation that we're having. Um, game, the game community is all about longevity. Um, and if we take Monty Cook, for instance, okay. Monty Cook is an amazing guy. Mm -hmm. um, I love his games. He's a great game designer. He at least gives him credibility. Mm -hmm. Even if, even if Numera was to come out, and it's probably going to be amazing, um, but even if it was to come out and it was, you know, downright bad, um, he still has a lot of support, and he still has a lot of fans. Um, I like to equate Monty Cook to st the Stephen King of the game industry. I think you that's know? fair. He comes out with some good stuff. He comes out with some bad stuff. But all in all, he's like... That guy who always has stuff, a lot of stuff, <laughs> who who has a lot of stuff, and who has just been in it forever. And I have mad respect for him, you know. And it, and it's it's and it's that kind of thing. Like I want to one day attain something like that. You mm -hmm. know, I've been in I've been in uh, publishing for about four years now. Actually, it'll be four years. Actually, it was four years. What's today? The eighth. It was four years two days ago. Oh, well, um, happy anniversary! Yeah, thank you. Um, so. So, I mean, I've been in it for four years. In, my, in this being my fourth year, I actually felt this year that I was finally accepted as someone who's going to be sticking around. Okay. Um, and, you know, like somebody who even the, the bigger names in the industry now kind of know who I am. Mm -hmm. I might not be a huge blip on their radar, but if they look at me, they're like, ah, yeah, that's that guy from Third Eye Games. Even if they don't know my name, they don't need to. They just need to know that I'm someone. <laughs> you know? It's you know, I'm not look. I'm not looking to feed my ego and be some big, huge, big sure. shot at fanfare whenever I walk into the room. <laughs> but um, but it's it's good to be acknowledged um, yes. and to be um, and to be recognized for doing something that is enhancing the community. Okay. So yeah, four years. So that's definitely something worth noting, I think. Um, like we discussed earlier, there are a lot of people who are looking at just putting out maybe one game on Kickstarter, and that's going to be it for them. But for somebody who's really interested in getting into the industry, they need to be willing to do it for the long haul. Yes. Um, and, uh, and again, I mean, the money... The money uh, if we're because again, if we're talking about this in a business-like sense here, um, the money. Uh, I was in publishing for I would say about a year before everything started to kind of pay for itself. Okay. Not necessarily have a surplus or any kind of profit, but everything started to kind of pay for itself, mm -hmm. and it's it's kind of grown more and more, which. Um, you know, one book would come out, and then it would pay for the next book, it would pay for the next book, then it would pay for the next book, and so on and so forth, and until it would be, this one would pay for the next book and some posters and flyers. Now, this one would pay for the next book and a trip to a con. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's gotten to the point now where, and, and again, and, and it has actually been four years um, and I have put every penny that has been earned back into the business, um, and that's actually part of you know what kind of you know keeps it running at this point um, is that I've done that. But now I'm actually to the point where I can actually start taking you know not a lot of money, but I can actually start taking some money out of there for myself. Um, mm -hmm. You know, not and also I've been doing um, freelancing, and I've been. Um, you know, things like that that are kind of helping with that. And do you um, but consider those freelance projects as part of the Third Eye Games income? It, it, it is, um, only because, um, again, the way that I approach it at this point is everything that I do um, in this, you know, area of expertise, um, it's all to bring Third Eye Games to, to make it bigger and to make it more okay. successful. Um, so even all my freelancing that I'm doing now, the last few freelance jobs that I've done have actually just kind of gone on to do. Um, I did a an adventure for Hollow Earth Expedition that bought me my new iPhone. Um, okay. So I mean, um, I did um, 
some layout um, that I'm currently doing for Fracture Kingdom, um, and a couple of those payments um, went on to get me some repairs for my car. Um, okay. But I mean, but I put the anything left over I put back into Third Eye Games, which isn't you know substantial. It's not a huge amount, but every little bit helps when you're talking about that. Um, you know, especially since you know last year I think I went to four cons, and this year it's looking more along the lines of about six to eight cons that I'll be going to this wow. year. Um, so I mean, that's you know super important that um, that I still continue to have some cash flow that is um, available for those kind of things. And of course, those things are expenses. Those things are you know things that you can write off on your taxes, mm -hmm. um, which is helpful as well. Absolutely. Do you um, do you have a tax accountant, or do you do all of that yourself? Um, I do it all myself right now. Um, with uh, 2013 coming up and a couple of expected changes for the company, uh, mm -hmm. I'll probably be um, getting an accountant on uh, on retainer, okay. uh, and then um, uh, you know using him to you know kind of do my balancing and and do my budgeting. I mean, right? It has been all me, but it'd be nice if I didn't have to do it all. Right. <laughs> so, um, back to a couple of the questions from our list. Yeah, we actually did have a list, and I kind of went off on a tangent. <laughs> no, that's, there, that's but, great. Uh, <laughs> um, so, what are some of the like the best things that you feel um, the this sort of business has to offer? Is it the, the flexible hours or the just the gratification of being able to publish something yourself? Um, you know, I, I, I think that the best thing about self-publishing is, um, honestly, it's the reaction from customers and people who, um, you know, like what you do. Uh, it, it's one of those things like, you know, because because again, it's not for the money. Um, right. You know, the money my, the money has been growing, mm -hmm. and it is almost almost there to the point where I can say, okay, it might be about the money, but it's not there yet. Um, but you know, the um, but the 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 real the real gratification out of self publishing in the gaming industry is you know being able to sit down with uh, fans and people who play the games and mm -hmm. you know be able to say how did you like that and they can kinda go back you can go back and forth for hours about you know this part of the story or that part of the game or this particular mechanic mm -hmm. um, you know and I'm and in every other instance besides when I'm talking about one of my games that I've written I'm very much of the alright you don't really need to tell me about your character you know, but if it's something <laughs> which we all love to do, because we all love to talk about our characters. Absolutely. Um, you know, but I'm actually one of those, you know, game creators that is very much of the, um, you know, that's not just your character. That's that's my character too. You know, because I uh, I created the world and I created the uh, you know the the mechanics for you to create that character. So I want to know how you're using it. I want to know what you're doing with it. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like that. Um, that's more of the creative side, though. I would say the, the gratification of the publishing, though, mm -hmm. is um, I would say definitely, um, it, it, you know, it's always good to have, you know, response to the, re the responsibilities that you have. Um, you know, and, it, and it's always good when you, take a, when you take a chance and something works out. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, for instance... Uh, I believe it was last year, I think it was right before Gen Con, I or right after Gen Con, I launched my very first online store. Okay. You know, this is just, a, a before then, all of my sales had been through either Studio 2 Publishing, uh, who handles all my warehousing and my uh, direct-to-store distribution, mm -hmm. um, or um, it had been through Drive -Thru RPG, who handles the majority of my PDF sales. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, you know what, if I launch my own online store, I wonder if anybody's ever going to actually buy from it or if they're just going to kind of go to whatever they're going to. And, you know, it costs me a little bit every month, but I, I um, 
did the math and I found out how many sales I needed to do each month in order for the store to get taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, and I found that not only did my online store not take away from my other sales, it, it, it only created a third avenue that now I am getting additional sales through. Right. Um, but, you know, uh, instead of, you know, selling a certain number, I was far surpassing the number every month that I needed to sell in order for it to sustain mm -hmm. itself. Um, and that's just one of those, that's just one of those things, like one of those like, all right, I'm, I'm kind of scared about doing this, it might be a flop, but let's try it. And I, and I like the feeling of being able to accomplish things like that. And especially with Kickstarter, um, you know, every time I launch a new Kickstarter, I'm trying something else, whether I'm trying a new technique that I'm trying with a video, or I've done different tiers, or I'm using more graphics um, and maybe explaining things in a different way, you know, and I'm trying a lot of different things with every new Kickstarter to try and figure out um, what works best and you know, what works best for me, mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, because for a lot of publishers out there sitting in front of a camera and saying, this is what my game is about, that's awesome. For other companies, they need a big flashy video, and not that they need it, but that's, you know, it becomes the expectation of the customers um, right. and, and the fans, you know. Um, my relationship with the fans of Third Eye Games is actually something that's really important mm -hmm. um, to my business model. Um, if I ever become that detached, you know, person who never interacts with anybody, then my company is going to fall apart because um, Third Eye Games is me in a way, mm -hmm. you know. So it's kind of interesting. So do you foresee yourself ever hiring out as a Kickstarter consultant? <laughs> you know, it, it's interesting because. Um, I am. Uh, I, I love to give Kickstarter advice, and and I don't mind giving free advice as long as it's not eating into too much time out of my uh, schedule of my writing and publishing. Um, but you know, it, it, it's interesting because I've done I've done several Kickstarters. Each of them hit their goal. Um, I've yet to have any any kind of you know, oh my God, you hit like two hundred thousand or anything. Right. I always, but I always hit my goal. And I always surpass it by a little bit, you know. Um, and you know, and that's the key is is I'm I'm looking for that, I'm looking for that thing that's going to make it pop and it's going to make it explode. Mm -hmm. And and I think everybody's looking for that. And right, um, right. and I think I'm going to find it as soon as I stop looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way to do it. It is. Um, let's see, we've covered these questions. See, just in talking, we managed to cover a bunch of the questions that were on this list. <laughs> I tend to ramble and answer questions with <laughs> um, So, what would you say is Third Eye Games' philosophy? Um, it's an interesting, I, it's an interesting question. Um, I mean, the, the main philosophy behind it, and again, because Third Eye Games is so, so entrenched into who I am, mm -hmm. um, I very much release games that I would like to play, mm -hmm. um, and I know that I am definitely not like the majority of players out there. Um, but I know that there are other players like that, like me out there. So you know, I make games that I would like to play, but also games that aren't already made. Um, you know, I, I see actually, um, and not a not a lot. Because there's a lot of creativity going on nowadays, which is pretty yeah. Good. But you know, there there seem to be a lot of overlap in a lot of games, um, and that's definitely not what Third Eye Games is about. For Third Eye Games, um, I take the initiative and I say, I have this really cool idea for a game like this, and then I say, well, I actually would like to play a game like that. So let me go check and see if a game like that exists. Mm -hmm. If a game like that exists, then I'll play that game. <laughs> you know, I don't need to write that game. It's right. already written. I mean, unless I play it and it's terrible, then I'll write my version that would be so much better. Right. Um, but, you know, to date, um, Third Eye Games has actually been um, mostly successful because um, I've been hitting on a lot of things that aren't out there right now. 
Um, you know, when API first came out, mm -hmm. uh, it was, you know, for me, it was my it was my very first, you know, release, um, and and it got picked up by a lot of people, and a lot of people enjoyed it because it was a different kind of game than was out there. I mean, at the moment, it was just kind of you know monster hunting and go kill that big bad thing, mm -hmm. you know, and I added a lot of gray area, a lot of investigation into that kind of thing and put it along with a, you know, kind of an awesome, you know, combat system that made everything a lot of fun. Um, with Wuxing, uh, I believe it's, I think, I believe it's still one of the only ninja games out on the market except for a few others that have come out since. Mm -hmm. You know, but when it hit, it was the, you know, it was the first ninja game since Ninjas and Super Spies in the 80s. You know, yeah. for some reason, nobody had a ninja game since Ninjas and Super Spies. Yeah, they sort of incorporate them into different games, like Pathfinder or whatever, but there certainly aren't any that are just about being a ninja. Exactly. And, you know, and with the rise of uh, the popularity of a lot of ninja anime, like Naruto and things like that, you know, it, it hit kind of big, and it still continues to be one of my higher-selling games. Hmm. Um, with Part-Time Gods... Um, I actually just released it because I thought it would be a fun game, and I, but it, it turned out that um, I apparently hit on a lot of people who were very dissatisfied with, with Scion. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of people picked up Part-Time Gods just because they were like, finally a game that I don't need to play Scion. Now, <laughs> I'm not bashing Scion. I, actually, I own Scion. I love Scion. Mm -hmm. um, it does something completely different than what Part-Time Gods does. And that was also part of it is you know, even though it's similar to Part-Time Gods, they're very different games. Sure. Um, you know, and the tone and the feel, and even though they kind of deal with some of the same subject matter. Um, and, you know, but with Mermaid Adventures, um, which was my release for this year, and I've released one game every year. Right. Um, to date, 2013 is going to be ridiculous. Um, I have, like, three, four games coming out. So you um, have... Camp Mess and Sinister and yes, well, only one of them is is all mine. Okay. So Sinister is all mine. That'll be my game that will be released in 2013. Um, but Camp Myth is a co collaboration between myself and Chris Lewis Carter, mm -hmm. um, the author of the the novels. Um, I'm also uh, assisting uh, Brennan Bishop, who is uh, one of my freelancers who wanted who wanted some assistance in publishing his own game. Oh, wow. um, so I'll be releasing his game, Storm Battalion, next year, and um, more than likely, I'll probably be releasing uh, uh, a game from uh, another writer that I know named Stephen Markley, uh, and he and his game called Bahati, based on African folklore. I also have a card game that'll be going along with Sinister, as well as a separate card game that I've created with a friend of mine, Jeff, which um, I'd like to actually get out before the end of the year, but it may or may or not happen. I'm still waiting for quotes back from card from card printers and whatnot. Um, do you see yourself expanding into publishing more games for more people, or are you going to try to focus it more on just self-publishing your own titles? Well, that was actually one of the things. You know, the Third Eye Games always started off, and it was kind of a pet project of mine. Mm -hmm. um, but as but but even from the get go. Um, one of my core things that I wanted to do was I wanted to give other people a shot that maybe they didn't have. Mm -hmm. um, and every and I've tried to keep this up. Uh, it hasn't happened every book, um, but on almost every book that I've released, um, I've brought on freelancers, and usually it's about two freelancers per book. And it's always been that I take one freelancer that is either well-known or that I've worked with in the past, and I try and give someone else a shot. Mm -hmm. Maybe their first book being written on, or maybe this is their second, but they're still not big. You know, I, I, that's what I've been trying to do. Um, you know, my very first book, actually, um, that was released after API, which API Worldwide Canada, I actually had um, uh, Deshawk SI um, on the book, and he's well known. He's written his own games. He's mm -hmm. really awesome. And then I had Brennan Bishop on as my kind of new guy who wasn't really out there. Brennan Brennan went on to write on almost every book since that I've released. Wow. And and he's the one that I'm that I'm going to be publishing um, Storm Battalion for next year. And that just goes to show you 
you know, that, you know, you can, you can uncover that diamond in the rough if you just give people a shot, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, and I feel like when, when I was um, out freelancing that I had somebody give me a shot. And, I'm, and I'd like to extend that to other writers and to other artists. You know, I try and have at least one new artist in every book that maybe hasn't done gaming stuff before, but maybe was looking into it, you know. And, and you know, and it's, and it's kind of like I've had people come and write for me, and maybe it's not for them, so they go and do other stuff. And, mm -hmm. But, you know, I have a few others that stick around, and, uh, you know, and it's pretty cool. And, and, and the... The cool thing about it is also that um, you actually f form friendships with these people, you right. know, because it's a social industry and it's a social uh, communi community. Um, it it just becomes that. You know, Brennan. I talk to Brennan uh, on a daily basis almost, and it has nothing to do with the fact that I'm publishing his game. We were talking almost every day be before we agreed to do that. You know, it's just you know, um, I talk to John D. Kennedy, who has written on a couple of my books. Um, and I talk to him almost every day. He comes out and um, he helps me with with my booth, and we hang out. And you know, and uh, and he's an awesome guy. And I mean, I've made so many great friends. A uh, Melissa Gay, who right. who you know, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Melissa Gay, I I love Melissa. I, I talk with her all the time, and um, you know, it, it, she's just an amazingly upbeat person. And that's who I like to surround myself with. You know, right. uh, creative, upbeat. Positive people. Um, okay. Yes. All right. I'm gonna stop <laughs> so, rambling so we can actually get to some more questions. I'm sure we have more questions. So that's um, just on that topic for one more moment. One of the things that I've wanted to do with accessible games and um, is to kind of find those diamond in the rough type of people. Mm -hmm. Do you ever find yourself um, like looking at free RPGs that people have published and saying, "I would like to extend my." my hand to this person and offer them a publishing job or you know I I haven't um, anyone that I have been in talks with publishing um, have have come to me mm -hmm. uh, except for um, Chris Lewis Carter who I approached him to possibly get the license to release his game of Camp Men mm -hmm. um, but that was more of a licensing thing and not sure. hey I really like you know, you have a game already, and I'd like to pr produce it. That's an interesting idea, though. Um, the The way that I look at it is honestly, if you have already gone the step of writing your game, laying it out, and releasing it, mm -hmm. you are you already have learned so much in that process mm -hmm. that I could help you come in and polish it. Right. But at that point. I mean, you, you, I mean, and I'll, I mean, it's different too if you've released it and you're saying, whew, you know, publishing is just not for me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't know. It, it seems though, I, I, I tend to think that everybody thinks the same way that I do. <laughs> and I know that this is not the case, but I, I, but I apply my way of thinking to everything. Mm -hmm. So the way that I look at it is, would I want somebody to come up to me and say, I want to release your game after I ju had just released API. Mm -hmm. So I had done all of the footwork. I had done everything needed to get done. Do I want somebody to come by and just kind of scoop up my game? Um, and the answer is kind of no. Right. I, I, wouldn't, I don't think I would want someone to approach me like that because then it almost feels kind of a kind of vultury mm -hmm. a little bit, you know. Um, I don't think that's a word, but if you add a, a oh. Y at the end of anything, it becomes a Absolutely. word. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, now if that person released a game and then he looked at some of the things that I've done and decided, let me talk to Aloy about maybe polishing this game off a little mm -hmm. bit more. Maybe and adding maybe, art to a game that's just text or something. Yeah, exactly. Now, I would be totally open to something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's kind of the way that I've approached my, you know, publishing other people's stuff mm -hmm. is, you know, if you can pitch me a good enough idea, I'm on board. Um, as but, you know, you have to understand that obviously I have a lot of I have a lot of things on my schedule, right? Um, and I might not get to you right away because I need to clear my schedule off of some other things. Um, so that means you might need to put a little bit of effort in 
in at the at the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, like you know, if you want me to kind of help you polish it off, well, I need you to kind of think of you know, give me all of the information on how you might want to see it. You know, what are your expectations? What are you thinking about? You know, uh, there are some companies that you can just hand them a uh, an incomplete game and they'll just go to town on it and finish it mm -hmm. for you. You know, I'm not that person. I, I, I you know, for, for me, and, and I'd even do this with layout, you know, mm -hmm. um, when I'm laying out something for somebody, I say, okay, so what's the mood? What's the theme? What's, a, what's this game about? What, what, what kind of things can I draw on so that the layout is going to reflect best mm -hmm. what this game is? You know, and um, I've actually gotten some layout positions um, with, with some other companies based mm -hmm. entirely off of the layout that I've done for my own games because I have four different game lines and right. all of their layouts are completely different. Mm -hmm. They all look different and they all have the feel of the game, um, which is important in layout for me because there mm -hmm. are other companies that just every book kind of looks the same um, you know, or, or it looks very generic regardless mm -hmm. of the subject matter. Right. You know, so... Um, whew. <laughs> that was a long answer. I don't even sure. remember the question anymore. <laughs> I'm good. Um, where's there any, um, I guess there's actually only one question left. Do you have any advice that you might give to somebody trying to get into the independent publishing industry? Whew. I, I, I think it's, I think this whole I think this whole thing has been advice. Sure. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, I have um, I have my my podcast that I do mm -hmm. um, on you know kind of being the insider on publishing, and that's um, Rolling Twenties, and that's at alloythesaint dot com. We're on hiatus right now. We're 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 preparing to go ahead and start the second season here soon. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, but honestly, the the best thing you can do is really put yourself out there and and if you are lucky enough to catch a break and really make it in the industry you need to remember that you know these games can't be vanity projects you need to be mm -hmm. making games that people want to play and you need to be able to convey that to them and you need to respect the people um, in the community um, I went to um, a con, this con also, that I decided I'm not going to anymore. Another, mm -hmm. uh, another reason for it is because um, the panels are, weren't very well, weren't very well done. And not to, the, um, not to the level of, you know, oh, well, you know, it's not organized and it's not on time or anything, but nobody stays on topic. Nobody answers any direct questions you know, things like that, and I'm like, um, it didn't make any sense to me. Like, a uh, prime example, the, um, and I'm not going to, I'm not mentioning any names or anything like that, um, but the panel was how to design a, a gaming module. Mm -hmm. And I came into the panel, and I was supposed to be on the panel, but there was low attendance, so I said, you know what, I'm going to leave the people up there, I'll just sit in the audience. Okay. And, um, and they're saying, well, you know, the first thing you got to do is make sure that you publish it um, a, uh, in a way that people will see it, and you need to make sure that, you know, you're on drive-through, and you need to get the word out there, and I'm like, that has nothing to do with designing a module. No. And, and they're like, well, what, what about if we want to write, you know, one for this company? Well, you should look at their, the, how they write theirs and kind of copy that style. Okay, well, that's, that's also still not helping us. So they said, does anybody have any questions? Nobody had any questions. So they said, Aloy, do you have any questions? You know, calling me out because I was supposed to be on the panel. And mm -hmm. I said, yes, how do you design a gaming module? <laughs> and, <laughs> and they said, well, I don't understand your question. I said, the name of the panel is how to design a gaming module, and you have told us nothing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I wasn't in a good mood that day, so I was, I was still very much, I was very much in a matter-of-fact kind of, kind of mm -hmm. thing. And I said, you know, how about we discuss the differences between the SASs that White Wolf uses and the plot point campaign um, format that Savage Worlds uses? Why don't we discuss this? Let's do that. And they said, yeah, those are both very good examples. And um, if you look at both of them, you might be able to merge them into your own style. It all just has to do with that and creating your own style for writing stuff. And I'm like, okay, I'm leaving. See you guys later. <laughs> you know, it was like, um, and, and honestly, for me, 
that shows um, a level of laziness on the part of, of those panelists, and, and it shows a level of disrespect for the people who have come to hear them speak on a specific topic. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if, if you come to a how to get into the gaming industry um, panel that I am on, I'm going to tell you how to get into the gaming industry. I'm not going to talk about how to design a gaming module. You know, it's 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 just that that's it's just that simple. You know, show respect for the people who um, are giving their time to you, and that and that is uh, people who are going to spend their time playing your game, and people mm -hmm. who are going to spend their time talking about your game, writing reviews, writing blogs about your game. You need to respect those people, even if it's negative opinion. Um, you know, there are a lot of negative opinions out there, and sometimes it's about my games. I, can I control that? No. My games aren't for everybody. Um, but I respect those people, and you know what? If they have a negative review, that still means that they got a copy of that book. They picked it up. They read it. They read every word. They absorbed it. You know, my job was done then at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I created this thing for people to read, and whether they like it or not, is then it, it, it's in their court at that point. <laughs> well, that's... Um, honestly, one of the reasons that I asked you specifically to do this interview, um, frankly, I've been fed up myself with listening to so many podcasts and watching so many videos and reading so many how-to articles that are just that sort of speculation you were talking about with those, uh, those people at the convention panel. But um, I would encourage everybody who might be watching this to check out some of the other panels that you have on your website. Um, because, frankly, they're some of the most useful that I've found myself. Oh, well, thank you. I, I would really like to thank you for um, agreeing to do this interview and being so open and honest and frank about everything. Of course, and, and I apologize if I might have rambled on quite a bit. Not at all. I hope to <laughs> fill up the hour, because we did run out of questions. <laughs> but, uh, but, yes, I mean, most definitely. Um, thank you for asking me to be there. I mean, obviously, right there... Um, you know that that obviously means that you see something in me, and 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 again, it's it's that level of respect. I'm gonna I'm going to continue to um, be worthy of your thinking of me in that light. So. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, well, I think that pretty much wraps things up. Um, since I do have you here, I would like to just encourage everybody who might be watching again to check out the Camp Myth Kickstarter. Um, Yes. Because I, I've backed it myself already, and I know that um, it's going to be a great book. Just yeah, we're almost halfway to our goal right now. Um, mm -hmm. We still have, a, I think, over 20 days left. Um, so, But we're about halfway to our goal. And um, I'm really excited about this book. It's going to be a really, really good one. Um, so, yeah, definitely go check that out. Just can't miss. <laughs> can't miss the RPG. It's pretty amazing. Um, and we're also, you know, in that... In that um, we're giving away copies of the, the novels as well and, and things nice. like that. So really, really good thing to go and do. Great. Well, thank you again so much for um, taking the time to interview. And um, I'll go ahead and end this hangout.